Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and I'm going to try and clear up some of the terminology used in the A10C. So if you're anything like me, I consider myself the layman, I'm not particularly smart, I'm not particularly dumb, I'm somewhere in the middle. And I have been learning the A10C over the last few days and I found it difficult. A lot of what you learn in the A10C is just different from all of the other planes and helicopters that you fly and that's made it very difficult for me. And a lot of the difficulty is understanding a lot of the acronyms and terminology that's used. Once you can understand them, then it just, everything else just starts to click. And so I'm going to try and describe some of those terms in my own layman's terms today, and hopefully that will help some people. And we're not going to go through all of them because there are bucket loads of acronyms in this, in this thing, and most of them you can just quickly look up the manual and figure out easily, like... TAD, tactile awareness display, you immediately know what that means. Digital stores management system, you can immediately know what that means. TGP, the targeting pod, you immediately know what that means. But some of them aren't quite as easy. The first one is SOI, center of interest. We've got lots of sensors on this aircraft, and we've got three, what I call sensor windows, ways of accessing those sensors. We've got the HUD as one, left MFD as two, right MFD as three. We can only interact with, actively, one of those sensor windows at a time. And if you want to interact with that sensor window, you have to have that sensor window selected as soy. So if I wanted to, uh, to use, not read from, but use, interact with, press buttons with this uh, HUD, I have to have it center of interest, soy. I do that by pressing this chap here, coolie switch up. We're also gonna use left and right in a bit. I'd press uh, coolie switch up short, uh, short. You can see we've now got a little star in there. That's our center of interest, so I'll select it sensor window and we can now do stuff we can press i might not be able to do it here but yeah there we can dms up and down now does stuff on this sensor window and i can do other stuff um now if i've got this sensor down here or the sensor window down here we could have on it a, a tad or a dsms or a tgp or a status page let's just go to the tab i want to do stuff interact with the tad i can't do it at the moment if i press dms up and down at the moment it's not changing it it's changing stuff in the hud well i need to make this soy and I do that with coolie left long. I've done that, and you can see it's created a rectangle around the outside. This is now, this window is now soy, and now DMS I'm down does this. I can now interact fully with this window. And it's, it's, it's one of the things that really drives you nuts as I've been learning, because like we had there, um, this is now soy. I forget that soy, and I go up here. I want to interact with this HUD here. I go to press DMS up to change this waypoint here. And it doesn't work nothing's working you get frustrated you miss your target and what i'm actually doing is is doing this soy uh doing this uh window here because this is soy so very important to understand that when you are going to press certain buttons that relate to one of these three sensor windows then you have it selected as soy it will give you reminders for instance this maverick screen i'm on at the moment is currently not soy it's reminding me okay you want to use the maverick fine but this is not soy you can't do it at the moment i'd have to do uh, a coolie right long to make this soy and then it will have a little box around the outside and whatnot i don't think i can do it now because i haven't got any actual mavericks on but you get the idea so that's my description of soy and while well, you have to drum it into your head if you're going to learn the a10c because otherwise it will drive you absolutely nuts Next, SPI, sensor point of interest. This is a three-dimensional point in space, somewhere in the world. The other thing is you only have one SPI. You will only ever have one SPI. You cannot create a SPI, you cannot delete a SPI. And this is important to understand, you can just move a SPI. I can have one there, I'm gonna move it there. I can have one there, I'm gonna move it there. But I've never got more than one in one place at a time. So I can, what I call designate a speed, that means, in other words, to move it to a certain place. And with that speed in a position, I can, I can do stuff to that speed. It's mainly going to be used for employing weapons. I've got a speed set over here, for instance. Well, I can go to my Maverick screen. I can press China hat forward long. And that will uh, slew this Maverick sensor to look at that speed. Then I press the fire button, and there you go. It's going to blow that speed up. Or I can drop bombs on that speed there. I could drop a guided bomb on that speed, or I could designate the speed over here, I'll drop a guided bomb from here, and that guided bomb would guide to my speed. Or I can use my guns against that speed. In that case, it would show the speed in my heart, when it's in my heart. In fact, I've got one literally right there. That is a speed, and it's 10 degrees to the right and 35 miles away. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, and that's going to show on my HUD, and I could go and employ my guns against that speed box on my HUD. So that is a, uh, an description of the speed, the limitations of the speed, and what we can do with the speed. Generally speaking, we can designate or uh, move that speed using TMS 
up long in one of our three sensor windows, be it there, or there, or there, generally speaking. Next is waypoints. You're probably familiar from waypoints with other modern aircraft. Any aircraft that's got an INS slash GPS navigation system is probably going to have waypoints. A waypoint is a three-dimensional or two-dimensional point in space that is designed for you to navigate to and from. Usually we have several waypoints, so unlike the speed, you will have several, uh, pretty much as many as you can ha uh, create, I think. I don't think there's a limit. You can create a waypoint from this uh, this center window here on this tab. I could click that button that's actually just disappeared. So there we go. I could create waypoint number four by clicking there, or I could create it in my CDU by typing in the numbers, or my CDU repeater there, or I could, I can't remember if I can create it from hard, I could create it in the mission editor. We can navigate to these waypoints independently so that they're not linked together, or we can link them together in the CDU here as something called a flight plan, which gives us more functionality when using these waypoints to navigate. Once we've got a fully functioning flight plan, we can then create a new point, waypoint, we can add it into that waypoint, uh, that flight plan, if we wish. That's how I'll describe waypoints and I'll describe them exclusively for use uh, as navigation. It's possible you might be able to use one of those waypoints and turn it into, designate a speed on top of that. In that case, you could use it for targeting, but generally, generally, that's not how it works. Next is our steer point. Our steer point is like our speed. We only ever have one. We're not going to delete one. We're not going to create one. We're going to move our steer point to wherever that is. Um, and we would you generally use a steer point to our active waypoint. So at the moment we've got on our hard waypoint three is active. So that is going to be our steer point. Our active waypoint becomes our steer point. You don't have to navigate to a waypoint. You could navigate to, for instance, a mark point that we'll go over in a bit. So if you select that mark point to navigate to, then that mark point becomes your steer point. So that's how I would understand what a steer point is. Next is a mark point, and kind of as the name suggests, it's the most generic uh, use of point. Of you know, it's a three D it's a three dimensional point in space again. And imagine a map, or imagine your tad here. Imagine a map with a pen and a pencil, and you wanted to just just note some points of things, um, uh, an ammo dump and a, a, a river and a bridge or whatever. You, we're going to use mark points to mark those things. So if we're driving along and we see something we like the look of, we don't create a speed on that, we don't generally create a waypoint and that, generally you're gonna create a mark point. It's the easiest thing to, to create in one of your sensor windows. You can create up to 26 of them at a time and they're lettered uh, A through to Z. And generally speaking, you don't actually do anything with a mark point. Generally, for instance, you could use a mark point. Let's pick mark point M, Mike. Um, it's at where it's we put it over where a bad tank is well what we could do then is designate our speed our one and only speed to that mark point and then employ a maverick onto that speed so that was that use of that mark point mike so we've got mark point november that's um, at a friendly base a friendly divert base or something then we could navigate to that mark point uh, via our steer point our one and only steer point and that would be the use of that mark point there so in my layman's terms in my mind it's if i'm looking at a map and i want to just mark off any quick points i want to mark i'm marking them with a little x and that is just creating a bunch of mark points along the way anchor so if we um zoom out with this sweet uh, tad here we can see this is our mission bullseye we only ever get one mission bullseye that is created in the mission editor and it can never be edited the idea of a bullseye is it's static for that mission and never edited what's its purpose its purpose is that is a reference point of everything that is zero zero a map always has to have a zero zero and that is our zero zero in x and y and possibly z as well i'm not sure no c level is z so this waypoint here two three two two and one they are all referenced in terms of this uh, bullseye here they are bullseye uh, you know 180 35 miles or whatever it is okay and that's good so that's how that works but what if i want to create a new reference point that is not bullseye i want to create one where i want it temporarily then i could create an anchor point uh, they say here i want to reference everything here for the time being i likened it to creating a temporary bullseye to work from so i could create my anchor point there i could work from my anchor point and then i could reference to that anchor point that's my understanding so that's all the terms i want to go through with those are the ones that i struggle with obviously those are my layman's understanding of those things you won't find those descriptions in the manual obviously uh, to be honest i found the manual just hard to understand generally as i do most manuals which is why i decided to come up with my own terms obviously i'm not an uh, expert a10 pilot by any means so correct me where i'm wrong at wrong and i will revise uh that's all i want to say i hope that helps and see you later